Yo, what is good, my anime people? What is good, yo? <sighs> so, so many shows, so much anime talk. <laughs> um, we got some pretty cool stuff popping off in these week's episodes. Uh, not only are they showing us quite a different approach for uh, the future of certain uh, like events. But with just Bell this week, I can honestly hope and kind of see already the huge um, gears kind of turning in his head now from this week's episode. Not only did he get put in the spot of understanding um, just what, you know, what goes on outside of his closed scope of things. Like, what has your goddess been protecting you from? What has your grandfather been protecting you from? What have all your friends now been protecting you from? And we're seeing exactly that. We're seeing everything that kind of has transpired over the course of him living here and becoming the little rookie to now understanding fully that there's people just praying and loving the whole entire fact that they're not weaker than certain other people like if you have any type of um, power or any type of position people are just using it as much as and much and as hardly and you know like as evil as possible and that's something he's never really actually got to get a good glimpse at <clears throat> when it came down to being in his sheltered you know uh kind of naive lifestyle where he goes out into a dungeon gets what's in the dungeon makes a little bit of money goes home and repeats the cycle to now every single situation that he almost puts himself in could cause a war that is even remotely like the one that's already happened or even twice as worse so the only reason why i say that is because it feels like the two goddesses or god and goddess or two gods that are making the terms can go as far as they want i mean if it really came down to it we could we could have uh, had instead of just the guy leave out of the town and you know lose everything he had like his house and everything she could have also asked for his life or something you know that's the type of stuff that kind of is implemented uh throughout these stories of just being like hey sure you got away with um you know not getting taken out completely but if you ever cross this again if you ever do this again you know that that was always the impl uh, implications of every kind of like familia that i've seen so far anything you kind of like go over the line of it comes back to bite you right like it pretty much all of a sudden shows up in your life some other time when maybe you don't expect it and with this backstory that we get to understand a good chunk of what uh what this girl alicia has been through not only what she's been through but even though she's gone through some messed up stuff she still holds her head high um, and does pretty much as she's told and stuff like that so it it felt real bad <laughs> to hear this and to hear that she was pretty much uh you know not not like angry as so much at the 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 animal looking girl the, i think they're called a rygart um but she was like she was so confused as to why someone who could be tricked and sold into this job could never, like, be mad or want revenge. Or then when you're in that position, you don't set out to make friends to make yourself feel a little bit more, uh, you know, some kind of compassion. She don't look into anything and read to learn about the world. None of that stuff. And because she wanted to learn about the world, make friends, and, you know, even maybe pray to escape one day, she then sees someone that has maybe got 
into this position worse than the way she did and then she, that girl isn't even trying her hardest to get out you know so it was almost like a mockery of being in trouble and then just kind of accepting your fate and i think that's maybe why she kind of felt some type of way and she goes in and breaks like this orb this like crystal which i think by breaking it it slowed down the process of the killing stone ritual and what we learn from how broken this girl is is she straight up can level up anybody with her with her yujutsu i like i like the name of it when i heard it her yujutsu <laughs> can level up any adventure and pretty much either if you're on par with me you then just absolutely jump past me or if you are um not if you're one level under me you're now right at my level with all of your skill sets that you have as a level two but now you're level three so definitely definitely one of the most op uh things we've seen in the show because we've seen how much of a dramatic change it can do for certain characters and giving it to characters that are very very sketchy already is pretty bad <laughs> you know um sure she didn't absolutely take out bell but look at the toad girl right like imagine if she gets leveled up like she would be disgustingly strong and we also learn a little bit more of who is the true kind of right hand person to the uh woman running all of this running the show and it is the toad woman hence why she's like after i have my time with bell you can have them and here she is trying to go behind her back on that so it kind of shows you that maybe she's fed up being you know the second best and when it came down to someone that she felt like she seen before even her she deserved it or something along those lines so now i feel like we're going to get quite a bit of history hopefully about all all of them but i kind of i don't know i don't know if i hope to get it because i kind of already hate them <laughs> but i also would love to know like where did all this stem from to become this person she literally broke the stone the alicia girl broke the stone gets beaten to the end of her life like she's practically just out of it just gushing blood and to top it off the goddess comes in and has her way with her like making her charmed as well so she had no actual uh you know thought process during all this probably she had no real emotion the charm was probably making her feel as if it was enjoyable and that's pretty much her story after you know having one bad day of wanting someone else to feel her pain or something along those lines and that's the way they handle stuff in their familia which it didn't make any sense why bell or why bell was seeing this woman go out of her way to supposedly hurt somebody when they're in the same familia and she pretty much tells bell like my familia is not a family it's like it's more like a prison it's more like being a slave it's more like being anything but a family and being treated as such so that that was pretty hard to hear and i think it's one of the greatest things bell could hear because he doesn't understand any type of complex uh you know bad doings of that people can continuously do and get away with in this place simply because who's to tell them not to they're gods and goddesses like whatever they say and do with their familia is whatever they say and do and to get the information as well as freya being the strongest familia in the whole entire place is crazy that is nuts i want to know why <laughs> what freya can i join step on me thank you no nah, um but it's it's crazy to me that that's where they kind of just drop a little n nugget of nugget of greatness like oh by the way she's literally trying to get in a fight with the strongest and 
the the strongest trying to go against the one team with the most influence probably at night so it's getting crazy um they want to go to war with freya which by them saying oh she's the strongest of them all i don't think freya would be that intimidated by this i mean sure she might have to give up bell in the case of not allowing her fight or the war to uh allow bell to give them an advantage over him so maybe they will just let bell she would let bell just get beaten up and stuff so she can still hold her rights and stuff like her power during this war um and then still get them if she really wants them but i think that's the whole point of this goddess of the pleasure is to absolutely break him so once he's broken he's nothing like the person she wanted to get her hands on before time and that's it's pretty dark <laughs> it's pretty freaking dark guys um literally just toying with humans and their gods or goddesses and just practically now making a sport out of it so we'll see how this happens and like i was saying this is really good for bell is he's torn, he is very torn about this he hesitated to try to save you know this girl that pretty much saved him twice now right saved him twice the second time being the worst where he is crying like a scared little child because he should he was right at the end of his line of being the same person he was and it only was because this toad woman noticed he wasn't enjoying himself pretty much like he wasn't in a state to be able to go further if you know what i mean and that was like a shock like that was like oh you're tied up on these chains and here i am in front of you how are you not willing to go <laughs> like what ew <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, with all that being said, my anime people, this episode was crazy, and I feel so bad for the people living within this goddess's realm, because even we see a guy that looks exactly like Freya's uh, main dude that raised the Minotaur and stuff, we saw a guy that was a younger version of that, so I'm pretty interested to see if he has any relationship with that guy, or if there is any type of bad blood because of... Uh, you know, people within their families and taking them from each other or something. I don't know, but I want to know. So with all that being said, I hope you guys have an amazing day, night, evening, whatever the case may be. I am your boy, the Anime J, and I'll definitely talk to you in the next one. So with that, peace.